So for this video, I'm gonna show you this cool effect. It's this kind of color crayon kind of effect. And I saw it from someone on Instagram. His Instagram is at Aaron F Design. I'll put that up here right now and I'll show some of his work. He's got a lot of really cool work that I really enjoy seeing. And I'm gonna kind of make a tutorial about some of the work I've seen on his page and also kind of do it in my own way. So without further ado, we'll get right into the video. Now that we're in Premiere, you're gonna wanna have your clip in your timeline. So this is what my clip looks like. And so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find a spot that you wanna start the effect. So I want it to show a little bit of the scene before it transitions into the effect, just so they could see the difference of the actual clip and then the effect. So I'm gonna let it play through a bit. And then right about here, I'll probably make a cut. And so it'll play through and then I'm planning on adding a transition here and then we're gonna transition into the effect. And so to begin the effect, what we're gonna to have to do is rotoscope out the subject. So I'm just going to see how long the clip is, make a cut where the clip ends and then what I'm gonna do is just right click and then replace with After Effects Comp. Okay, so now that we have After Effects pulled out, we're just gonna do a simple rotoscope. You're gonna find the rotoscope button up here. You're just gonna double click on your video comp and then it'll open up it into a layer. And so what you're gonna wanna do is just simply just kind of outline your subject. And this doesn't have to be too exact but you wanna have it something that is pretty accurate, just depending on what kind of look you want. So if you want this to be a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, obviously spend more time on the rotoscope. If not, if you're gonna add outlines and stuff, no worries. So I'm gonna go ahead and just rotoscope this whole thing out. Okay, so now that our rotoscope is all finished, what we're gonna wanna do is just change the feather a bit. Doesn't have to be too much, and then just click freeze. Once that's all finished up, we're gonna open back up into Premiere, and now you should have nothing behind your subject. So it should look something like this. Then what we're gonna do here is just go to Color Mat. We're just gonna create a new color mat and then we're gonna just place it behind the subject. So this is what it looks like now. Obviously it's not very clean, but that'll be all right. So what we're gonna do now is mess around with the color of our subjected rotoscope. We're gonna go to color, and we are going to mess around with the saturation and the whites and blacks. So I'm gonna take the saturation down all the way and then I'm gonna mess around with the whites and blacks. And so for this, you wanna make sure that your subject, uh, especially the lighter areas, you wanna make it even more lighter, closer to white, because what we're gonna do is draw on these, and if it's a darker color, the crayons aren't gonna stand out as much. So you wanna make sure that you wanna brighten up the darks, and then you also wanna brighten up the lights so that it'll be easy to kind of draw on. So this is what we have now. And so what we're gonna do now is we are going to go at the start and what we're gonna do is just export frame. What you're gonna do is just export this to a folder that you know. And so once that you have a folder selected, what you're gonna wanna do is just click okay. And you're gonna wanna do this for however long you want your effect to last. So I'm only gonna do 12 frames just for this tutorial purpose, but you could obviously do it a lot longer depending on if you wanna add an animation in the background or whatever. So now that I have those, what I'm gonna do is just print out these PNGs and then we are gonna to get to coloring. Okay, so now that we have our pages printed out, what we're gonna do is use different utensils here. So the main one I'd recommend is using some kind of crayon. 
I also have a colored pencil and then I also have a marker. Notice how these are all orange and this is because the original clip that we used, our subject was wearing orange. So you wanna match the color with whatever the subject was wearing from the start. So since it's orange, that's what we're gonna use first. So I'm first gonna go ahead and use the crayon. So I'm gonna color the jacket here and you can kind of see what I mean by saying you want to try and get this as light as possible just so the crayon will show up just the best. I could have probably made it a, a bit more kind of lighter so the crayon showed up a little more, but this will do as well. So I'm just going to go in and color on the jacket for all of these frames. All right, so now that the jacket is fully colored, what I'm gonna do is go in and add some colored pencil lines just to kind of emphasize the fact that we are drawing on this. So, so just some kind of lines on the outside here. Nothing too crazy though. So something just like that. And so what you can also do, since that the kind of bulletproof vest, the shirt kind of thing, is black you could also go in and add some black crayon instead of black crayon what i'm going to do is use a black colored pencil just because i couldn't find a black colored crayon at the moment so just kind of color in you can do this pretty rough and if you do it the more rough you do the more apparent it'll kind of be like a drawing kind of kids drawing effect which i think is pretty cool so i'm going to do it pretty rough and then for the pants, it is white, but what I'm gonna do here, I have a white and then also a gray. So I have these two colors, just kind of mess around with how they look. I'll probably, I'll probably just stick with white here. Sometimes it won't show up very well. And so I'm just gonna do something like that. What Aaron likes to do sometimes is also add kind of his background as well, but just through colored crayons and just other utensils. And so what you can do is you could add the background kind of to it. And so since it was a city atmosphere, what you could do is add something like buildings. And so you could animate this in, or you could also just draw it. And so what I'm gonna do is try and animate this in. So I'm just gonna start out something small like this and I'll kind of make it look like two buildings are kind of coming out of the ground. So I'm just gonna slowly increase just the height of these and then also just having windows in them as well. Something like this. Now that I have it kind of where I want, I'll probably add two more frames of it just like this so it looks like it stays still for a bit and then on the next sheet of frames that i printed out what i'll do is the same thing but just opposite so i'll slowly have them come down back into the ground so something like this and so then like i discussed before i'll just slowly have it reverse so then i'll have the buildings get smaller and smaller and i'll draw that on the other frame so what you could also do here is if you want to do a little bit more, you could add some kind of background. So let's go in and add some kind of sky and then some clouds. And so what I'll do here is I'll add some clouds with just a simple pencil. And then what I'll do is I'll actually outline the background with the sky color. So I'll do something like this, and then I'll have the clouds just kind of staying in that same position. If you want, you could also move the clouds so you can have them kind of moving sideways, or you could just have them staying still. And so now that the building is getting a little taller, I'm gonna have a little depth, so I'll have the cloud behind the building, and so it won't go past the building here, as you can see. So now that that's done, what we're gonna do is add the color to the background of the sky. And so what I'm gonna do here is just get some kind of blue colored utensil and I'm just going to 
draw in the background. And so for the edges, since we have just a white background here, it's going to be hard to tell where kind of the frame ends. And so if you wanted to do it, you could just add some kind of black outline on your frame before you printed them out. And then that'll have that kind of idea of where the frame ends. And then what you can do is just scale the frame up once you're actually back into Premiere. But I didn't do that for this case, so I'm going to have to kind of guess. You rather err on overshooting how far the frame goes, just in case. So we're just going to guess something like that. And then we're just going to continue to do that for the rest of the frames. All right, so now that our first page is done and colored, what I'm going to do is quickly do the other page, and then I'm going to scan them, and then we're going to get them back into Premiere. All right, so now that we're back in Premiere, you're going to want to have your two scans here, and you're just going to bring them over your clip. So now that you have your clip, you're just going to resize it for the first frame. I'm going to do that now. Okay, so to reframe this, because we don't have edges and we don't really know where they are, what we're going to do is lower the opacity. So I'm going to lower it to about something around 70, and what you're going to want to do is go to the first part of your clip. Once this is here, you're going to want to match up your printed layer and then the layer you actually printed out and did digitally. So we're going to do something that looks like this, and what you can do is just mess around with the opacity, and you'll be able to see kind of how well you lined it up. So once you do that, you're just going to want to put it back to 70, and what we're going to do is cut this frame up into six. So we're going to move two frames to the right, one, two, cut, one, two, and we're going to do this for six individual pieces because that's how many we printed out. So what we're going to do is go to the second one and we're just going to move that to the second frame we had printed out and just align it with the clip underneath. And then you're just going to repeat this step for all of these. And so for this one, you're just going to want to move down, just align that bottom layer that just align the bottom of the subject with the bottom of the frame. So that looks pretty good. And then just copy the motion and then paste it over to the other two clips. So now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and do the second one really quickly and then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so now that all of your frames are repositioned, you can play it through and you can kind of see it already. So we're going to want to go back and fix all of the opacity. So just turn this one up to 100 and then just copy the opacity here and just paste it to all the other clips. And so now you have something looking like this already, which looks good. But what we want to do is emphasize that color. You can kind of see that the color is not very apparent and we want to make that a little more apparent. So just go to color. First thing, just raise up the saturation. If you wanted to add some kind of color tint to it, you can do that as well. But for this, I like to move down the contrast a bit and it kind of brings out the blues. And then you could just kind of mess around with whatever look you kind of like. So I'm gonna go with something like this. And so you can kind of see the difference here. And so what we're going to do here is just copy this Lumetri color that we added and then just copy and paste that to the rest of the clips. So now that that's done, this is what our clip is looking like. And so what we want to do is kind of just add a subtle transition. You can add multiple things here. You can add any kind of shake, any kind of... Um, any kind of flicker, any kind of flash. But what I'm going to do here is just I have a couple film burns here. This is just what they kind of look like. And I'm just going to use them to blend them together. So 
something like this. So this is what the effect looks like. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate all the support. If you want to like and comment, that would mean the world to me. And if you want to check out one of my recent videos about my 2022 reel, check it out.